So, having started his trading career over seven years ago in the Forex market, Eddie Viteri has since diversified his trading instruments to include stocks, indices, commodities, and futures. Those who know or have met Eddie know the passion that drives him, success and freedom, not only for him and his loved ones, but for those around the globe. Although Eddie takes the role of a teacher, leader, and founder of Trading Group, Eddie would always be a student of the game. So Eddie, let's start things off by you telling us a little about yourself. Absolutely, Henry. Well, as you guys know, my name is Eddie Viteri. I was born in Maryland. Right now, I'm currently 25 years old. And I guess what makes me is the root behind everything that I do. And that's knowing where I and others are going to be. And, you know, personally and financially, where you guys will be and where I will be with the proper focus and de dedication. Although I am considered extremely social by people who do know me, I have a very close friend of group uh, uh, of people uh, that I consider my family, that I consider my true friends. Some of the hobbies that I do have include traveling, and this is one of my passions as well. And through my travels, I've had the opportunity to meet new cultures, listen to new music, eat new food, swim in new beaches, and that's something I really love to do. Uh, I think this has also helped me open my mind to many things over the last few years. And from that, I've, I've looked to reprogram myself from basically everything that we're taught and we're told to do as a society. Only then do I feel that, you know, by asking yourself the why to everything, by relearning as much as we can, if not everything that we've been told, I feel that through that, we can truly be free from the limitations that a lot of us find ourselves in every single day. And if we do that, we can be free mentally, physically, and that's one of the things that, that drives me, Henry. And how did you first get involved in trading on Nadex? Wow. <laughs> well, we would have to go back to where I started, I guess. I started, like you said, man, I started with Forex back in 2009. And although I mainly, like, I kept to that, I, I mainly just kept to Forex and trading the underlying market. In 2013, that's when I found out about, about binary options. Um, this is around the time that I really started. I started using what I've learned in the markets over the last few years to, to develop and to test my own strategies. Um, around this same time is when offshore brokers were, they were everywhere. I'm not sure if you remember this era, Henry, but the offshore brokers were everywhere. They were being <laughs> heavily promoted on social media. I'm pretty sure you remember this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and, the dark ages. <laughs> oh, the dark ages, exactly, man. And so, you know, this was going from the underlying to, to Nadex, to, not, not to Nadex yet, but to the offshores and to binary options. It was, uh, it was an exciting change for me because it was going from being price based, I guess, from target based, uh, a way of trading with the underlying market to, to now focusing on another aspect that I, I hadn't put too much focus on before, which was the timing element. And I feel that this really played a key role in my evolution as a trader as well, because, because though ultimately it always seemed that it was uh, more than more than anything, man. Things were not so like what I did not want to deal with, Henry, was price manipulation. I didn't want to deal with things that I felt no trader should have to deal with. No okay. trader should have to worry about, you know, and that was stuff such as, you know, you're clicking the button and you see the price you're supposed to get and you receive a different price quote. Stuff like that, Henry, when that happened and then I heard about Nadex through the grapevine. And that's when I just spent a couple months strictly trading my uh, Nadex, familiarizing myself with Nadex. And then now with Trading Group and where we're at now, we've been able to establish ourselves as a leading trading community with a primary, primary focus being Nadex. And that's basically how I, I came from Forex to Nadex, Henry. Even though now I trade, basically, like you said earlier, I trade a, a wide uh, selection of instruments. So, Eddie, you wake up in the morning, you grab your cup of coffee, <laughs> and what do you do to kick off your trading day? What are the first few minutes of your trading day look like? This is a uh, – I don't drink coffee, Henry. <laughs> 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 but this is, how, this is how everything starts for me, man. I feel that my morning begins with the day before, with the, the night before, actually. So 
what I like to do, and I'll just kind of run you a little bit through my routine is I will plan out my day ahead the night before. So what that means, you know, I'll plan out my trading day as far as what I'm going to do, uh, what times I'm going to trade, what times there, there might be news that I'm looking at, meetings, etc. So I, I plan out my day the night before. And with that, I also... I also have my market outlook that I do for myself the day ahead, for the day ahead, basically looking at the different scenarios that could happen in the market in whatever asset I'm looking at for the day ahead. So that's my night leading into my morning. When I wake up then, man, that's when I, I like to start out with a small meditation. I like to be able to get in tune with myself, with my body, with my mind. And that way, start off the day with the right energy and the right things that I'm looking to do. And when I finish my small little meditation, I'll follow this with some positive affirmations, positive affirmations about myself, about success in my life, in the life of others that we're helping. Just just uh, keeping that right energy, man, keeping that flow going. Um, and, you know, this is before you're even before I even jump out of bed. I'm already, I'm doing this. I don't just jump out of bed and turn on the charts. I like to meditate, get these positive affirmations in. And then what I lead, what the positive affirmations will lead into is envisioning what I had planned last night so that whatever I planned can be the present that I create today. When I'm done with that, Henry, uh, then I open up my charts. Uh, at this point, that's when I, I analyze whichever asset I was looking at. I look at what it did overnight and whether my, my outlook for the market, whether it was correct or whether it wasn't. And then from there, I can kind of find out what part of the cycle the market is in right now, what kind of opportunities I could then look for for the rest of the day. That's a little bit of how my, my morning begins, Henry. That's a pretty long morning after meditating. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, actually, all of this takes about, you know, with just meditating and the positive affirmations, brother, like this will take, it could be 15 minutes, man. It could be, you know, right. 15, 30 minutes, but starting your day like that, I feel is a very powerful way to do it. You know, you start off with the right energy, the right expectations and and your goals for that day and how, how you broke it down to, to make those goals possible, man, and, and, and achieve them. What type of meditations do you normally do in the morning? Is it just I, like focus meditation where you like clear your head or mm -hmm. like all your thoughts or? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, because I'm sure you know, man, you, and you know, especially being in this kind of industry, you know, you wake up and you will have all these thoughts and ideas come into your head about trading and you know what you're going to do and all this and right it can be a little overwhelming at sometimes and i felt that before i started doing this it was like i was waking up and there was just so much going on in my head that i couldn't really concentrate or plan out in a way what exactly i wanted to do so with the meditation what i do is a lot of this, what you said, you know, clearing your head from all those ideas that just rush your mind as soon as you wake up, right? So right. I do that, clear my head, man, um, and get in tune with my body as far as feeling even even how you're breathing, you know, feeling the air enter your lungs and and just understanding that you're alive. You know, that's that's a huge thing, and that's not something that I feel a lot of people appreciate every single day especially when you got to wake up and you got to go to 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 your work to your job or to school and you have all these ideas that just rushed your head that you don't have a a second to think about it i feel it's very important to be able to to extract all that even for 10 minutes and understand that you're alive you have you're healthy you got the opportunity to do all of these things today and I, the energy that you, you can start your day out, you know, you might even start your day a little bit negative. You know, not every single day is the most positive days, but right. just with those few minutes, man, the, it can really change things. And it can really change just how, how you start out your day and what you do for the rest of the day, you know? Yeah, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Especially when you wake up and you have pretty much an infinite, like, amount of information. Oh, through the Man. media out there so Man. you really have to ignore all that because exactly. they're all just weapons of mass distraction and 100%. you can really get consumed by all the information that is i agree a hundred percent with you henry and that's what i kind of uh you know 
alluded to in the very beginning of the interview was, you know, reprogramming yourself, uh, learning everything. And this goes with things that we've learned since we were kids to things that we're learning with trading, you know, everything you should, I feel it's very important to ask yourself the why to everything. And you know, why are, why are they showing you this on TV? And is it really something that I have to, uh, I should be paying attention to right now? Is it, is it something that's going to be profitable for me and, you know, healthy for me in my life? Or is it just something that they're looking to, to distract me with? So I feel that's a very powerful way to start out your day, you know, not looking at TV or this and that, but like looking at yourself before anything else, you know? Right. Now, so Eddie, what's your biggest strength as a trader? My biggest uh, strength as a trader? Yes. That would have to be... That's a that's a kind of crazy question, Henry, but I feel that I could give you a, a, a couple answers to this. And the first one, I guess, would be the determination and the passion, I guess, for what I do. Because I feel that, especially with what people can see online, what they can see you know, on YouTube or in social media, I feel that many think that trading is just a kind of one, two, three step kind of deal. You know, you simply follow an indicator, right. you follow a strategy, and you should be able to replicate the same thing. You should be able to get the same exact results. And although, you know, a methodology and an approach is extremely useful, I feel that something that may not only set me apart, if you want to put it like that, but many profitable traders is understanding that the market, it's an extremely intricate, it's an extremely calculated and determined market. What do I mean by determined? It's determined to, to really just to take those retail traders out who only focus on those one, two, three kind of deals, you know, who only focus on those factors and who don't take the entire context of what's going on. They don't take that into consideration. So I feel that being able to look at the market in a bigger context with the bigger picture is a very big strength, not only of myself, but of many people that you see having success in this industry. Um, I feel another strength could be not giving up, Henry, not giving up because trading is not the easiest industry to be to be involved <laughs> with. And uh, I know that's right. You know, and even more to stay involved with. So that's why I feel there's so many retail traders that, you know, they stop trading off of a, some strong losses. And trading in itself, I think, is is very testing um, of you as a person, of, of yourself. But also knowing that every single loss that you have, it can be taken in and it, it can be used as a lesson. I This is something I've always said um, and I've always kind of preached this, you know, use and turn a loss into a lesson, you know, gain knowledge from your losses. And the way I could, the best way I can explain this is imagine you're paying a thousand dollars to go to class and you know, you got it, you're, you're taking this class in college and you're paying all this money. And all of a sudden you were just asleep in class. You know, you weren't paying attention in class. You know, you failed this test and why? Because you weren't paying attention and you weren't even paying attention to the reasons why you failed the test. So I feel that if you're going to, let's say you lose a trade and you lose a thousand dollars, you should look at that as an opportunity to be used as a lesson. So you could either use those a thousand bucks and you were sleeping during class and you didn't get anything out of it or you lost those a thousand dollars, but you gained some knowledge out of it and you will be able to gain enough knowledge to hopefully not make that mistake again, if you made a mistake to begin with. So I feel, you know, not giving up comes back to this idea, Henry, because if other professional and other successful traders who blew their accounts, you know, three, four or five times and they stay determined enough to come back and make that wealth, then I feel anybody can do it. You know, you can do it, I can do it, and I have done it because I've also had my losses, you know? Um, but it's the strength in believing in, in yourself and what I believe in myself, you know, my capabilities, the power behind the determination, the passion, right, and the intelligence, and just believing in your own success, you know, and all the meanings of that word. You know, this is a, this is a very vital concept that traders should practice and 
because trading, as you know, Henry, trading is much more than just looking at a chart, you know? And now, do you have a f certain asset that you like to trade the most? I, I do. I do. I really love the Forex currency pairs. I love how even in their apparent unpredictable nature and their apparent erratic volatility spikes, I feel that all of the studying I've done, you know, that's been over seven years now, I feel so much studying has now made it an organized chaos, if you want to call it like that. Um, it's almost like the guys behind the scenes, you know, the big guys, the market makers, the market movers, they have like this hand of cards that they play. And it's the same hand of cards every single time. So when you kind of know what tricks they have, then you can basically know what to expect from them. And you can know what to expect from them and why. So that's something about the Forex currency pairs that I love. And more than anything, Henry, I spent about probably eight months um, just exclusively dedicated to trading the USDJPY because I feel it's very important to get acquainted with how a particular asset works. When, when you're able to do that, you're able to, you'll know which are the strongest levels, you know, what are good, important levels to look at. What do these guys like to do with this particular asset and at what times and for how long? So. For me, it's been the USDJPY more than anything, if I had to break it down, um, just because of how how much I've studied this asset and how familiar I am with it, how it moves now, Henry. And what's your favorite indicator to use? Favorite indicator? This is This is a crazy question because, as you know, there are hundreds of indicators out there and there are people making indicators, you know, developing new ones every single day. I have a few that I do prefer and a few that I do look at, but if I had to kind of break it down to my favorite one, Henry, I would have to say it's raw price data itself. Um, although people may not consider this an indicator, I think this is the strongest indicator because by you properly understanding the market structure and the market movements, you're going to have a much stronger indication of what is to come next and why. And versus strictly looking at an indicator, I think, and trying to piece together the information from five to 10 indicators together, or because this one indicator, the number was 0.5 higher than another number of the same indicator. Like by you, looking at the actual price itself, the actual price itself is telling you the actual intentions real time of what the guys are trying to do. And again, I, this is something I've always said too, an indicator is not a bad thing because I have seen some, you know, some promotion out there that just don't use indicators, you know, because indicators it's lagging and this and that indicators are not a bad thing. I, I could never say anything to anyone whose style, you know, involves indicators to make their trading decisions. How, how could I ever say that's a bad thing if they're making money with it, right? Right. I may not personally like using so many indicators, but again, if that's financially helping them and others, that's a beautiful thing. But what I will say is those who strictly focus on only indicators, you know, um, and you see this, you see people going from one place to another, searching for that holy grail indicator, um, you know, the one that's going to make them millionaires in no time. And I feel, again, just coming back to what the price, the, the raw data is telling you. And this isn't strictly on a specific time frame or, or other because there are many ways to, to visualize the, the information on the charts. But I feel coming back to that, and really looking to understand the market as an indicator itself, I feel that's going to give a much more detailed, a much more bigger picture look, if you will, at what the market is doing. And, you know, that's going to be the market itself as an indicator. So that would be my answer, Henry. Right. And I completely resonate with that, especially the part when you said how the market is really chaotic. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bill Williams, but um, I, yeah. you're familiar with him? 
Yeah, I, I've heard the name, but I, right. although the whatever his teachings or whatever the concept he goes through, I'm not I'm not going to say I'm as familiar as you are. So please tell me a little bit more. Oh. He basically teaches the concept of fractals and how oh, yeah. pretty much how the market is like a living system and mm -hmm. kind of pivots and turns like a natural phenomenon, pretty much. Exactly, man. So, exactly. So trying to put indicators on like a living system is kind of like um trying to predict the weather exactly during any given time of the day exactly it, it, it doesn't it, always work out but you can kind <laughs> of get a glimpse at what's going on you can get hints you can get hints right but right. uh like you said man it's it's an organized chaos the, the the reason i say organized chaos is because like you said it's a living creature man it's it's a it's an entity and it's by only looking at you know say you're looking at the rsi and you are you have a reading of 82 and it's above you know it's over bot now or whatever by only looking at stuff like that in an entity a body a whatever a creature that is constantly moving constantly adapting uh will constantly adapt to any even like a, a whisper of news of a breaking news that happens if you're only looking at one small parameter and your decision is only based on that i feel that can be limiting in itself um i feel that can limit yourself and you won't be able to understand the concept of an organized chaos and right. that's what it is man it's what i see on the charts is trying to understand all of those moments in the market that a retail trader can look at it and will make bad and poor decisions but it's because of the the chaos that they put on the screen. They put on this this erratic behavior, and you know sometimes you you can see it with like a, a choppy market, let's say, uh, a market that's specifically designed to confuse the retail trader. But when you understand that the market does have its structure and it does have its pivots, as you said, and specifics that it does basically every single day now that chaos becomes organized and now that chaos you can you can use that to make profitable trading decisions totally agree with that but now eddie if you had one piece of advice for someone starting out trading what would it be hmm this would have to go back down to the basics i feel okay uh, this would have to go back down to having a plan uh having proper risk management a a trader's mentality a, a a correct mindset i feel these are especially in in trading these are some of the most widely known concepts about trading you know when everyone is is learning trading they hear they hear risk management everywhere you know this is talked about everywhere and this is almost like common knowledge if you want to put it but it's i feel it's so common in a way that it's so overlooked and these aspects are one of the most overlooked things in trading um trading is the biggest business in the world and you know if you if you were going to start up a new company today you're going to have a business plan for how you're going to do that why would trading be any different and this is what so many traders do they they want to just jump right into the market they want to get right into the money they want to replicate what they saw on social media with someone going 10 and 0 and that's <laughs> fine but you need a plan and you need a plan not only for the business but for your success i feel and this encompasses your mind this encompasses your body this encompasses your your spirituality everything this is a it's a complete package when you trade and so that's one of the biggest things having that plan for success having the mentality that you will have the right expectations coming into the market and what does that mean a lot of people again you your focus so much on the money or your focus is you have perhaps a a 80% win rate let's just put it like that you think that because you have such a high win rate you're going to win this trade and you come into the trade expecting to win you come into the trade with the scenario that you're thinking about being the only one you're thinking about and i feel that the expectations have to be 
Correct. And the expectation is to be that we don't know whether we're going to win or we're going to lose. We just simply do not know that. And because we simply don't know what the market is going to do 100% of the time, we cannot 100% of the time say we're going to be right or because we 100% of the time know that it's going to do something. I feel that's an improper expectation and that leads to a lot of people having their losses. And you have to realize that the market is, like we said earlier, man, the market is a, is a li living creature and it's a unique living creature, unique to every moment in time. So if every moment in time is truly unique, then every outcome will also be truly unique. And if that's the case, then how could we ever say, I'm going to be 100% correct and when that doesn't happen, that's when the emotional responses come out of people. That's when people get angry or fearful or greedy because things happen based on improper expectations, I feel. So again, I, I aim for a 85 to 95% win rate. And this is something that I'm very, I've been very almost perfectionist to try to get these win rates. But again, this is something that I cannot expect to win 100% of the time. We have to realize that we don't need an 85, 95% win rate to be profitable. We simply don't need it. I know a lot of traders and even mathematically, by having your proper risk management in place, by having your mentality with the right expectations, only technically need a 50% win ratio and you will be profitable. You know, like Warren Buffett says, it's about how much you profit when your trade analysis is correct and how much you lose when it's incorrect. So we should let our profits run as much as we can and we should minimize our losses early. And all of these things, Henry, that I'm telling you, it's all it all comes back down to the basics. Having your proper risk management, having your risk to reward and your expectations are also going to be reflected in the plan that you make. Uh, so all of these aspects, Henry, I feel these are some of the most important aspects of the game. And because of that, I actually, we actually made a series on our, on our website for trading group called the achieving trading balance series, specifically going over these things, specifically letting traders know what 95% of the traders are overlooking and if 95% of the traders are overlooking some of these things, then I feel we should really look into them and we should really practice them. And by having these things in place, you will see a difference in your trading and not only your trading, but the way you handle yourself as a person as well. So my advice would be look at the basics, look at the proper risk management, have the right mindset and have your goals, have your plan have your plan to reach your goals. And when you encompass the basics into your trading, you will see a difference. Now, in terms of probability, do you base that like, like how do you back test your trades? Do you do it per 200 or every 500 trades? Or how do you determine the probability of your success? To give you an idea about that, the very first strategy that I made, Henry, was uh, my two minute strategy. Okay. This is a this was when I was really getting into binary options and the whole you know getting a feel for the whole time element like I said earlier. So to give you an idea when I started sharing results of you know a percentage a win percentage for me that could never be something that is tested say only on like the last the last week of trades when I sent when I shared some of my results that was based on around six months of testing, of, of looking at examples, looking at different assets, different market environments, different um, reactions to the market based on, you know, let's just say as an example, you remember when the Swiss franc flew down a thousand pips that one day. Do you remember that? I don't think I was there for that day. This was back in or January or February, I believe. Brother. Yeah, I definitely wasn't there for that day. <laughs> I don't think I knew what binary options were that day. <laughs> but you see, like, there's so many market environments and things that can happen in the market that I 
for me to test and get a, a fixed percentage, a fixed result ratio, whatever, I would have to do that over a long period of time. So every single strategy that I've done to find the results where I feel confident enough to be able to even share that with other people, because I would never share anything if I felt that it wouldn't be replicated, it wouldn't easily be replicated by someone else. Because if you're gonna share that knowledge, it should, I feel it should be easily taken in and used rather than having to only depend on that person to figure out why you did this, why you did that. The knowledge behind it should be simple enough that anybody should be able to use it and replicate it. So for me, finding those results, it was over about a six month period for any particular strategy, Henry. Now, if there's anyone out there that's looking to find the probability of like their strategy um, being profitable, I would recommend back testing it at least, well, back testing and forward testing for at least three months because yeah. Yeah. the market basically uh, goes through cycles and especially through monthly um, news releases. Mm -hmm. You would want to retest every single news release exactly. that occurs in the market. So I, thinking I, that you found a holy grail and <laughs> testing it over a week won't really get you anywhere exactly, because man. everything cycles. So you should really think of this as like a science experiment where uh -huh. you um, go through your methods, your hypothesis, uh, your testing, your results, your methodology, mm -hmm. and rinse and repeat. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, because as you know, the market, like you said, the market has its cycles. It has the things it likes to do on a periodic basic basis, basically. And a strategy that could work today may not work in a month. And that's some things that unfortunately people have had experiences. You know, they may have purchased a strategy. It might have worked for a couple weeks and then a month later, it's not working. So that's something extremely important when you're doing your back testing is to realize that this can happen to your strategy and you should not become emotionally attached to your trades, to your strategies, to anything. Just be attached more to understanding the market itself. And if you're going to be back testing any particular strategy, I would say, like, you, like we had mentioned, look at the different environments look at when these news releases were were released and how the market reacted and if you're trying to find specific parameters you then have to find out what works and for how long it works and more importantly why does your strategy not work when it doesn't and finding out the reasons why it doesn't and narrowing it down and putting parameters in place so that when it doesn't work, that's simply a trade that you would not take. Okay, now, Eddie, we're going to make a little shift here. Let's do and this. And I want you to take me to the worst trade you've ever had <laughs> and the lessons you learned from it. I'm wow. talking about, like, a time where you just got on your knees and started crying <laughs> because let, let, you lost let, so much. Let's go back to 2009 then, man. Let's go back to 2009. This was, uh, again, when I – kind of just began trading. This is probably like, this is after four months of demoing and then I finally got into live trading. So I, I was trading, very excited, you know, the, thinking of all the possibilities as a new trader. And I remember one, one week, this was one week, I basically traded from Tuesday night till Friday morning. I was, uh, didn't really sleep. I'm, I'm going to venture and say I didn't sleep at all um, for like three days. I was, it was not the best plan. See, this is, this is what, this is the difference is back then I didn't have that set plan of how I would approach the market every day. I didn't have my set goal, daily goal. And uh, I wasn't taking the whole balance into consideration, you know, not sleeping for three days is not exactly the healthiest thing to do. And you're not going to be as attentive and as focused without sleeping for three days. So what happened was I did that and I did that on Thursday, Thursday nights. I remember I had put in about 
six trades. I, I don't remember what the currency pair this was, but I put in six trades and I was, I told myself I'm going to trade overnight. I'm going to trade until the morning and then I'm done for the week. Uh, a little bit greedy, a little bit with the wrong expectations, but you know, this was just coming into trading my first few months. And I was there, it was around four in the morning. It, I looked at my charts and all I see was green. I remember all six of the trades were green and this was around four in the morning. All of a sudden I wake up, my face was like against my laptop screen. Like I was just kind of, I had just passed out. <laughs> I look at the time and it's, it's like 4.15 in the morning. It was like right, it was like I just passed out for like 10, 15 minutes. I look at my chart and everything was red. I'm talking deep red <laughs> and everything I had made in those three days trading and trying to be calculated, all that was gone and more in literally 10, 15 minutes. Like I, one second, you know, not taking into consideration the, the sleep and what that could mean. I passed out, woke up and all the profits and more were, was gone. My first big loss, I think I lost about 30% or 40% of my account on that trade and my heart just kind of stopped. I had to reevaluate my life that weekend. Did you have a stop loss for it? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I tell you, this was one of the hardest lessons I had to, I had to go through. It was, it was me taking trades, saying I'm going to be up. I can manually stop loss. Seeing the trades only be green, figuring I don't have to use a stop loss because I'll hit my target. Waking up, everything was red. Everything was gone. And it's stuff like that that you, makes, you, makes you understand that you can make a lot of money trading and just as easily, if not easier, you can, can lose, lose it all. It all. <laughs> you can lose it all, man. Yep. One, one time, one big loss right there. <laughs> Okay, now imagine you took a bad trade and you had to start all over from square one the next day. Mm -hmm. You look at your account and you see that all you have left is $100. How would you start building your account? The way I would do it, I, my way of building that account back up would be to not get right back into trading right away. Why? Because if I obviously took a bad trade and I that's a really bad trade enough to be only left with a hundred bucks. Uh, if that happened, I would first have to evaluate what I did that caused the bad trade. That would be my first, my first thing. I would not get right back into market. I would first go back, look at the trade, understand what happened that caused this trade to lose. Was it that I made a mistake? Did I jump the gun? Did I not wait for full confirmation? Did I get greedy? Whatever it is, I can write that down and I can find out what was the mistake that was made. Maybe there wasn't a mistake made and maybe it was simply one of the times where the market, well, you know, you're just not going to be correct in the analysis. We're not always going to be correct. So the first thing would be evaluating that trade, the bad trade that happened. After that, now I would have to evaluate how much money I have left. I have a hundred bucks. So how much, what is my goal with that $100? My goal could then be maybe by the end of the week on a very conservative uh, daily goal type of thing, maybe at the end of the week, I want to get it to 500 bucks, let's just say. So now I would break down how much I need to make every single day, basically. And what I would break it down to is more than what I need to make it make per day or per trade is then focus on those trades one at a time. Um, I'm very, I, I like to focus more than on the money. I like to focus on the analysis that could lead to the money. Um, I, I like counting my trades more in, was the speculation correct or was it not correct? And so now that you have your plan, what I want to bring it up to by the end of the week, now I'll focus on each one of those trades one at a time, very calculated and, and always considering what I did to get me back down to 100. Consider that to not do that again and use those 100, uh, 100 bucks you have, flip it to 500 
and then reevaluate the next goal and then keep it moving. Now, Eddie, it's been great having you on the interview. So let's end things with a parting piece of guidance and the best way we can reach you. All right, perfect, perfect, Henry. Again, I just wanted to tell you thank you for having me on with you. What I would like to say some last words is, and, and this kind of goes back to, again, Henry, what you had asked, you know, any new advice for people starting out trading. And I, what I would say is everyone has a different style of trading and a different style that they might that they have to find for themselves. Just because a system or a strategy works does not mean that that might fit your specific trading style. So everyone can interpret the information from a chart in a different way and everyone can use that interpretation to analyze information and make different kinds of speculations. So I feel that trading is an art. I feel trading is an art form and I feel we have to use this art to ask ourselves, what is the picture that's being painted in front of me? What are the charts showing me? And think about it, what are the charts not only showing me, but showing the entire, the entire trading world? From there, what, what is this picture trying to express that causes the 95% of traders to be unsuccessful? Because when we finally can understand that and we can see the, the picture from that point of view, then we can finally use that information, I feel, to be a part of the canvas of profitability. And that's the, the same picture that the big players are a part of. So I would just say treat your trading as an art. Don't treat it so much as you need to find a specific number and a parameter in your indicators. Nah, like look at the bigger picture and this is something that with what I'm personally doing and what we're doing at Traden with my business partners and with our entire community is we're helping people understand that every single day and understand the markets more and more you know as well as the financial potential that everybody can have you know with the right focus with the right determination with the balance in your life and if what 95% of the trading world does is considered ordinary, in quotes, then what we're teaching our members and what I would say everyone should look to be is be out of the ordinary. Be out of the ordinary, be the difference, be the 5% who have the right expectations, who have the right mentality, who do not give up and who, who will make this work. You know, we can keep sharing this knowledge to people all around the world. Everyone has the opportunity. We all have the resources and there's more than enough money for everyone out there. That's just a little, a nice little advice I would hope to give people. If you guys do wanna reach me, you can please visit us at www.tradinggroup.com. You can send me an email at evterry at tradinggroup.com. And if not, you can also hit me up on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Eddie dot be Terry and I'm also on Twitter Instagram but you can always reach me there it was great to be on this interview with you Henry I really appreciate that and I hope to hope to have another another um, encounter with you in the future man get some nice trades in too yeah no problem great having you on Eddie absolutely Henry catch you later brother you too have a great day man we'll be talking <laughs>